You can do anything at Lama Academy. Anything at all. The only limit is yourself. Shout out to you if you know that's from. Today we're gonna to talk about the Canvas Scaler, which by default comes on every canvas that you create, and it allows you to scale the canvas with the screen size. But if you're like me and you ended up making some kind of UI framework to manage your pages where you have sliding transitions, this component becomes a really big problem because the pages outside of your screen view end up being in screen view on people who have bigger monitors than you or different aspect ratios from whatever you're using. So what we're gonna do now is take a look at each of the different scale modes and see how do they work, what do they do, and how to work around some of these weird kind of overlapping pages whenever you have something positioned off screen on your resolution, but maybe not off screen for somebody else's resolution. Hey, and just really quick, I wanna give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. And that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you wanna help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash Academy. You can get your name up on the screen. You can get a voice shout out starting at the silver tier and some other cool perks. Special shout outs to Raphael and Andrew Bowen for being the silver tier supporters. I am so grateful. Thank you. I have a very simple scene set up here. I've got the main canvas area in the middle that I have something at the top left, the top right, bottom left, bottom right. I have a button directly in the middle and I have some text statically positioned at the top. And what I mean by that is it has a fixed size that is positioned 100 units down from the top. You can see the anchors at the top middle. So we're down 100 units from that. At the very bottom, we have some other text called scaling position bottom that scales with the screen size on the width that is 100 units up from the bottom. We'll see the difference in how this text behaves as we try different canvas scaling options. Whenever we create a canvas, by default, we get a canvas scaler added and it's set to the constant pixel size UI scale mode. This one works okay, but generally if you're designing something for, like in my case, I'm using 1920 by 1080, and then somebody comes in with a 4K monitor, all of your stuff is really small. That's a really common problem when 4K monitors first came out and stuff just didn't scale up very effectively. The important thing as you see as I rescale all of these is that the rec transform of the canvas, the scale stays one. That's how we keep all the elements to be the same size. If we want the scale of the rec transform to adjust, we have to change the scale factor on the canvas scaler ourselves. What this does is allows us to scale up or down the entire canvas based on this value. With some of the other scale modes, it will dynamically adjust the scale factor based on a target or reference resolution. The caveat to that is you can see that the background is changing size as we change different resolutions and that kind of stuff. And that's because I have the background set to stretch in every direction. So as the canvas size is changed, so does the background. The only other option we have right now is reference pixels per unit, and this is always available with every UI scale mode. You can see as I lower this value, the border of the sprite becomes much smaller. As I raise this value, you'll see that the sprite gets much more pixelated. The default value of 100 is usually really good, and I've never actually had a need to change this. You might be asking, why do we have these red panels on the side of the canvas? In a recent video I did, I showed how to manage the state of your UI using a stack and pages. Whenever a page would transition in, you had the option to have it slide in from the side. These red panels are there to indicate when the canvas scaler will show something that you have positioned off screen and will require you to change how you animate in that UI based on the screen size and the scale of the canvas. We'll talk about my favorite scale mode in a little bit that prevents you from having to worry about that. I don't think there's a lot more to say about this one. It works okay as long as whatever resolution you're designing on is really close to the resolution that players will actually be playing on. If it's not, then you have to manually adjust the scale factor. If you don't do that, then let's say that you're designing on a 1080p monitor and somebody's playing on a 4K monitor, everything will be very tiny. And if you do the inverse where you're designing on a nice 4K monitor and somebody's playing at 1080p, everything will be absolutely huge on their screen. Next step, we're gonna do the scale with screen size. This changes our options here a little bit where we can define a reference resolution. Below that, we have a screen match mode. This allows you to choose how the canvas scaler will automatically scale your canvas for you. And the default is match width or height. We'll get into the other options in just a second. This mode allows you to do basically what I was talking about on the constant pixel size automatically. With the match width or height, that controls how the canvas scaler will manage scaling the canvas. If we have it set to width, what it's gonna do is make sure that the width of the canvas, in this case with the X at 1920, we're gonna keep that constant regardless of what screen size we're dealing with. We will adjust the height based on the available screen size. The scale of the canvas has also been adjusted because the available screen size is less than whatever we have here. 
Here you can see this problem again, that stuff off screen becomes visible vertically whenever we scale to an aspect ratio that is not the same, so not the 16 by nine I was using. If I disable those so we can actually see the canvas, you can see that this doesn't work extremely well if we go to a non-conforming aspect ratio. Something simple like 1610 isn't that big of a deal, it still looks okay. With 4K, it's still gonna look good. You can see that the scale has been adjusted to two, like I was saying, you could do manually earlier. This mode automatically handles that for you, regardless if you have width or height matched because we're keeping the same aspect ratio. Where it changes, if I move it over to height, you'll see that now the width is the one that is adjusted, the scale has changed, and the height stays the same. If we set it to be something in the middle, you'll see that it scales both the X and the Y proportionally because we put it at, we're going to give weight at 50% to the width, 50% to the height. So both my width and height get adjusted, the scale changes appropriately, and even at super weird aspect ratios, it still looks okay. Really, the only challenge that I see with this one is that it scales it to be very small when you get to something at a weird aspect ratio, but generally on at least PCs and consoles, you don't end up supporting these kinds of resolutions. What we're looking at right now is more like a phone form factor. That's a tongue twister for you. And usually then you've designed the UI totally differently because your UI won't scale this way in the first place. So other than the off screen stuff coming into the view, this one works very well for you automatically. If we use the screen match mode expand, our little slider for width or height goes away. And what this does is expands the canvas horizontally and or vertically so the size of the canvas will never be smaller than the reference resolution. So here we defined 1920 by 1080. As I scale this down you can see that the scale of the canvas gets smaller but the width and the height stay 1920 1080-ish the entire time. If we scale it up, we can see that the exact same thing happened as before, that the width and the height stay the same, but the scale has gone to two as we go to 4K. If I set the aspect ratio to something like 1610, which is slightly taller than the 169 aspect ratio I've designed for, we can see that it scales up a little bit on the height, the width has remained the same, and the stuff off screen starts to come in. So again, this doesn't work particularly well if I'm designing my UI with stuff off screen that comes in. We'll disable all those again so we can actually see what's happening. And if I set the width to be something like 21.9, we'll see that the height remains the same, but the width has been expanded. If we go to F4.3, we see that the width stays the same and the height adjusts dynamically. So what expand does basically is similar to the match width or height, but it will choose based on your reference and target resolution, which one to match for you, ensuring that we will never go smaller than the reference resolution. This again scales up and down pretty effectively until we start talking about things like these weird aspect ratios of vertically done stuff. Even as we go to like the four three aspect ratio, it still looks okay. It's a little bit small, but it works pretty well. Finally, as we move to my favorite screen match mode, shrink, what shrink does is the inverse. It makes sure that we will never go larger than this size. So as I take something like 16.9, if I scale it up to 4K, it behaves the exact same as we had before. Still 1920 by 1080 target resolution with a scale of two. If I set it to be something very wide, like 32.9, it's a little bit large because you can see that the width is 1920 still, but the height has been cut in half. What I wanna point out on this one is that anything that is off screen, because we're making sure that the width and the height do not exceed that target resolution, will never be in view of the camera. So if you have something where you have these slide animations, you do not have to do anything weird with disabling, enabling the game objects or anything like that. You can see them, you can edit them without having to constantly be toggling everything. This one's my favorite because it just works kind of the best in my brain. If we scale it down to something like 1366 by 768, we just scale it down a little bit. Even at weird aspect ratios, this still holds visible and stuff may get scrunched together because you've gone to a wildly different aspect ratio, but it's still there on the screen. You can still read it. And depending on how you anchor stuff, it may still be fine. I will say that getting into really ultra wide monitor resolutions is this one's weak spot because it will shrink the height so much that it ends up being really challenging to see everything because everything's still keeping kind of a relatively large size. If we take the 32 by nine, for example, there's not a lot of space between the middle top and bottom because we're giving that 100 pixel padding. That's gonna be the weakest point of the scaling mode. The last one here is constant physical size. And I'm gonna be honest with you, this one really confused me for a really long time. I didn't understand what was going on here and everything was huge, so I just didn't use it, I didn't even consider it. It defaults to physical units points, which looks very similar to what we saw before. It also has fallback screen DPI 
default sprite DPI and still reference pixels per unit. The default sprite DPI is the pixels per inch to use for sprites that have a pixels per unit setting that matches the reference pixels per unit setting. The fallback screen DPI is the DPI to assume if the screen DPI is not known. What's happening here is we're taking the DPI, that's dots per inch, of some screen. We're going to use the units on the rec transform as these units instead of pixels. In all the other scale modes, these are pixels. This allows us to use real world physical units instead of pixels to define the size of our UI. And it's just a different workflow. So if you do understand physical units better than pixels, this is probably the UI scale mode that you're going to want to use. When we have the physical unit of points, it's very close to the same as pixels, but not quite the same. The goal of this is to make sure that your text, your buttons, all this are visible and keep the same physical size. The reason this mode is sometimes scary is we generally, or at least I generally, will think things in pixels. So all the values on the rec transform have to do with pixels. If I change it to something like centimeters, the screen gets absolutely massive. My scale for my 1920 by 1080 has gone to 37 and the width and the height are only 50 and 28. And there's not really a way for me to change why it's so big from the canvas scaler because the fallback screen DPI, my monitor is reporting my DPI so it's using that. So the fallback screen DPI doesn't work. And it appears that nothing I change here actually changes the UI. So to actually make this work, you need to come into all of your actual canvas rec transform things and adjust the size to be something in centimeters instead of pixels. If I start with the play button, we'll see that's defined as 320 centimeters wide. That's a third of a meter, that's huge. If I change it to be like three and the height to be one, suddenly it becomes very small, so three by one centimeter. If I repeat that process for the text, changing the size of the text, the offsets, all that kind of stuff, now define values to be like one and two instead of hundreds and 25s and that kind of stuff. And it looks really good. My button's a little bit small and my top left, top right text is pretty big, but I think you get the idea. This ends up behaving pretty similarly to the constant pixel size, just keeping in mind that it uses a different unit. It's using this physical unit instead of a pixel. The physical unit options are centimeters, millimeters, inches, points, and picas. I think. And if I scale this with the free aspect ratio, you'll see that the scale does not change. It's only the size, the width, and the height that adjust as I adjust the screen size. This is the exact same behavior we saw with the UI scale mode of constant pixel size. This is a little bit nicer though because we're not using pixels that we're trying to keep the same size. We're trying to keep everything the same physical size. So the main limitation of things getting very small where you would have to adjust the scale yourself is resolved automatically by the canvas scaler in this case. I personally had a lot of trouble understanding how the canvas scaler worked and struggled for a really long time whenever I was first designing UIs to work on multiple different resolutions. Even using the Unity documentation, it still didn't really make a lot of sense to me. They mostly talked about how the rec transform works and then the canvas scaler was kind of like, oh, this thing that's there and figure it out. I want to really emphasize too that a lot of what I was talking about in this is working with the idea of having pages that can slide in and designing stuff that is off screen by default. A lot of the reason I don't like some of the particular different scaling modes are because I do design my UIs where I have a main page that's visible by default and then I put the other pages on the side or up and to the right, something like that. And if you don't do it like that, a lot of the negativity that I would have towards that is removed. I hope this video helps you understand the Canvas Scaler, the different options it has, and how they work, so that way you can choose which one works best for you and your workflow. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every Tuesday, and remember, the infinite is attainable at the Llama Academy. And I'll see you next week.